From family events, to volunteer opportunities, to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we have a special edition of The Pulse. The Pulse is our quarterly show where we highlight things that are going on at Metro East Community Media and KZME Radio. And with me tonight, to start out, I have my good friend Jessica Guay. Thanks for being here, Jessica. No problem, my pleasure. Thank you. Jessica is a, a volunteer here at Metro East, and um, you're involved in all sorts of things here, aren't you? I am. I've um, been a volunteer almost two years now and I've uh, gotten to learn how to use the equipment and um, become a producer for about a year and almost a half. Good, so it's, I'm excited. It's, it's fun, isn't it? There's so much fun it, here. We have, a lot, we have a lot going on here, and we have a lot going on on the show tonight. Um, coming up, we will be talking about KCME, and we have um, James Deneen, who is the volunteer music director at KCME, is here, with um, Kristen, who is going to be you know, talking about her show. She does the uh, Lunchbox show on KCME on Tuesdays, I believe, so they'll be talking about that. and. Um, there's just been a lot going on here. Um, we have a great staff here. I think you might agree that right. most of the staff is pretty amazing. Um, one of our staff people, Mike Canty, who is, uh, works the equipment room and is, is a producer here, he recently won an award, and I think maybe we have a picture of Mike getting his award, but besides all the work he does here at Metro East, he also does volunteer work for the um, uh, Aggression Art Committee. They um, have an art show at the Gresham City Hall every I don't know, every couple months, I think. And he volunteers all of his time to tape interviews and um, to, um, let's see, there's a picture of Mike there getting his award. And a uh, very humble, very humble guy. But you, you know Mike, right? Yes, he's helped out um, a lot. Anytime I have any questions, he's pretty much my go-to guy and he's always been really helpful. He yeah. explains things thoroughly and he's Good. really patient with me. And yeah. um, he's also shared with me a lot of the interests he has in art. and. Explained to me that he does do more than you know run the equipment room yeah, there. Yeah, he does. And uh, I like the volunteer work that he does. some stuff on TV. Yeah, and, um, and I'm interested in a lot of stuff he's interested in. Good. Too. Yeah, My, Mike's a great guy, and he's one of our, our terrific um, staff here at Metro East. And and the staff here are here, you know, to help volunteers like you. You to help learn. me a lot, oh, Monica. Thanks, thanks, Jess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You know, one of our other um, uh, producers we have here is, is Keith Thomas. And you know Keith. You probably you've worked, I've worked with, with Keith. Keith. Yeah. yeah. And Keith is. Uh, passionate about sports. Yes, he is. <laughs> and just don't even ask him because you'll you won't hear the end of it. <laughs> but he is great on uh, um, producing a ba our basketball coverage. So the basketball coverage started January 4th of this year, and it goes through the end of February. And um, they have a huge crew. They have their staff consists of uh, volunteers and students, but they're. Um, they have uh, directors, they have switchers, they have camera people, they have people that do the audio, the graphics, um, color commentator, play-by-play. -play. So if people are interested in, in covering sports, you know, that's something that, you know, people get, get come into Metro East, become part of our family here and learn how to use all the equipment that something other people could do next year. Keith is definitely the go-to for the sports guy. I know um, with some of the new equipment they got, he's very excited about oh, it. Yeah. It's state of the... The it's line, it's state of the so art, art, and yeah. um, they're taping now in HD, in high def, so that um, with their new TriCaster that you were talking about, it's their new equipment. So all the games, they're going to be all loaded onto YouTube, so people can watch them in full high def, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's so. new, and that's, that's pretty neat stuff. So um, yeah, they've had exciting games, and, and they're fun to watch. Um, you know, as far as volunteers go, we have lots of opportunities for volunteers to do things. and. Um, for example, when somebody comes here, they go through our orientation, they go through our um, basic studio class, then we can have people come and actually work on this show. For example, our floor director, John, tonight, we have Elizabeth on camera, I think we've got Ian and Steve back in the control room. They're all volunteers that have learned how to work on our equipment. They do a terrific job for us, and, um, and they can work on this show. But we also have other shows 
other um, shows produced by volunteers. You know, for example, if you were to do your own show and you need somebody to work on it, you could call for other volunteers to help you. That's what I hope to do. Yeah, I plan on doing. Well, for example, what have you? So far, you've already um, given I've, us several shows, right? Yeah, I've gotten to do something on um, the environment, uh, cleaning up the rivers. I've gotten to do um, cover a charity event for some homeless people. Um, a small thing on the Portland Occupy campsite when it came out. Cool. Um, some forced floor closure situations. Wow. Um, little things out in the community, um, and I'm really thankful for all the um, education that I've learned here. Good, good and deal. Help, you know, when it comes to bringing it in for the editing. Right, right. And um, help on some of the shows like the Open Holiday. I got to run camera. Right, and right. Those kind of things help encourage what we learn in the classes on the floor and there's always help Good to deal. help. Well, the, we were talking about the basketball. Um, I th we have a little clip of some of the basketball, so I think we should take a look at that now so people can see just how good that basketball coverage is and how if people are interested, they might be able to be involved in it next okay. year. Let's take a look at that. Metro Esports, I am PJ Miller. With me is Jerry Peterson. Jerry, how are you doing tonight? Great, PJ. I'm excited about this game and back to be, I mean, glad to be back here at Central Catholic High School. Oh, good rebound. Good offensive rebound. And she hits it. It's a two pointer with the foot on the line. Amber Peshka. Dalton, with her speed, is able to get down the court very quickly. Just need one miss. There's the miss. Got to get the rebound, though. Otis with the last second shot. He hits that. My goodness, but it's a little bit too late. Boy. As Central Catholic defeats Barlow 59-55 here at Central of, Catholic High School. Great game, great game, PJ. And that shot, they could have used a couple of those earlier on, and they might have had a chance, but it was a little bit too late. I admit that was pretty impressive, isn't it? They did I mean, graphics. They graphics do a great job. Yeah, Keith is pretty pretty amazing, and, and all of his help on that, Joe and uh, Tony, and everybody does a terrific job. We were talking a little bit about other productions that you can work on, like other volunteer productions, and um, one of our longest running producers is Larry Smith. He does a show called The Body Smith. Larry is um, does an exercise, a workout show. He's been with us for ages. And um, all, all of the producers eventually need, you know, more volunteers to work on their shows, to, you know, help them out. And, and he's looking for more people right now. And so if you're interested in, in doing that, you just need to contact us um, and, you know, contact Taj, our volunteer director, or go to our, you know, give us a call. And, but Larry, um, in particular, I swear he hasn't changed <laughs> in all these years that he has been working on it, and that's probably due to those good workouts. But we've got a little clip of Larry um, showing what he did years ago, what he's doing now, and um, and talking about the opportunity to volunteer on, on his show. Awesome. So I think we should take a look at that, too. I'm curious to see what he looked like years ago. <laughs> you won't see much difference. A large part of how healthy you are as you age is up to you. And reach it up, reach and extend. Grapevine, rock to the front, to the inside, step touch. Work it, work it, work it. Hi, I'm Larry Smith and I've been producing the Body Smith workout since 1986. Why do I produce a show like this? Well, one thing I'm a little difficult to discourage after all these years, and I believe that the whole idea of people being fit and active will drive down our nation's health care costs. You at home, you can modify any way you want to. Okay, here comes a new step. Knee lift to the outside. 30 years or so ago, I noticed my metabolism was slowing down, and so that was right at the beginning of the aerobics craze. But I got kind of bored with the same routines from the same instructors all the time. Well, it just so happened that one Saturday I went in to take class, and they were having a workshop. 
I eavesdropped and within about a month I was uh, teaching my own classes and I've been going at it ever since. If you have a passion for fitness or would like to work in community television, contact me. I'd love to have you on my team. Contact me at thebodysmith at hotmail.com. Work it. <laughs> That's catchy. I love it. Larry, Larry's a hard-working guy, and he's been doing this for a very, very long time. So that's an opportunity that people have. And, um, you know, our, our, um, here at the studio, we have terrific equipment here to work with. We have great studio space. Um, but we're in the middle of a, um, a month-long um, process right now to update everything to high def. Because we all of our cameras already um, were filming in high def, but we're not broadcasting in high def. So everything's being upgraded. Um, uh, we're already we have already done some of it. We now have the new mobile units so people can take out like a micro mobile unit, which you've worked on that. Yes. Yeah, yes, you've worked on that. And you take that out and, and it's a you know a multi-camera unit. It's already in high def. Um, the TriCaster is high def. The um, our government agencies we um, broadcast for um, Gresham, Fairview, uh, Troutdale, and Multnomah County, and we do government uh, meetings and such. And those are all going to be in high def. Okay. Um, it's a huge uh, expense, it's a huge changeover, but it's going to be so much better. I mean, I, you know, everything is going to be clearer and uh, wider pictures, so um, we're trying to upgrade everything. And so most likely this studio will be converted to high def, probably be closed for maybe the month of June, because it's a big, big process, but it's something we're really looking forward to being able to, to share with everybody to, you know, keep up with the big boys. So that'll be great. Now, um, besides the... Um, HD transition. Uh, another change is that we are trying to train people in some of the changes. For example, we have um, a new uh, editing system coming. We've had the new micro mobile equipment coming, and a lot of changes as far as the equipment that we have here. And we have terrific trainers here, Peter and Lauren, who are training everybody, getting them up to speed on, on the new stuff. So, and you've worked with both, both of, of them. Both of them, and they are great trainers. Very patient, aren't yes, they? Yes, very patient, very thorough, yeah. and um, fun. Yeah, you know, fun, they, that's right. They don't make you feel uh, negative at all for maybe not knowing it. They understand that and they help you all the way through. Yep, I agree, I agree. So um, Peter um, has a little uh, training update that he can share with us to talk a little bit about the training changes that are that are coming up. So um, before we take a break, let's, uh, well, let's, let's listen to Peter, one of our terrific uh, trainers and see what he has to say about the training changes. Okay. All righty. Hi there and welcome to Training Update. One of the first things I want to talk about today is hard drives. These are no longer going to be a part of your editing workflow. We're getting rid of them completely and we're actually going to be replacing them with a server-based file storage system. So what that's going to be like is instead of actually checking this out every time you go into the equipment room, moving it to the edit base, plugging it in, and, and having it pop up on the computer, what you'll do is just click a link on the computer, sign in with your credentials, and that way you'll have access to the files that you need to edit, such as what you shot on the camera, the render files, pictures, music, directly from that computer. And uh, you can do that from any one of our editing suites. So it'll be a lot easier on your end. And you won't have to worry about you know, your hard drive falling off the table and becoming inoperable. So hopefully uh, that will be a very smooth transition and we'll definitely help you every step of the way through it. So um, say farewell to the drives and like that, they're gone. I've got some great news. We have new iMacs coming to our edit suites here at Metro East. So, this means they'll be a lot faster. We've got quad-core processors in each of these. And each new Mac will come with Final Cut Pro 10. That's one, two, three. 
Right now we're using Final Cut Pro 6. So that's quite a huge jump. And the software, I've used it, and it's a lot of fun to teach. It's a lot of fun to edit with. And I think you guys are gonna have a blast with it. We are gonna be offering upgrade classes for those of you who are already certified with Final Cut Pro 6. Uh, so those will be free for you who've already taken it. Last week here at Metro East, we had a discovery dinner where Mike Canty and myself showed off features of Final Cut Pro 10, and a lot of people showed up for that. Thank you all for coming out and expressing interest in that so we can really see that this is going to make a huge impact on your workflow. Hey there, now I'm in the lobby at Metro East. I'm actually shooting this using an East Side Stories camera. Basically, what this is is a handheld video camera that you can easily take anywhere with you. And for the East Side Stories project, people are taking them home and telling a story about growing up in Gresham and Fairview and Troutdale. And we're putting them all on a website, eastsidestories.org. Oh, look, here we are in Studio A. Wow, that's weird. Uh, I can, guess I can just keep talking here and uh, finish up the segment using our main camera. Um, so, interesting how that edit worked, huh? That was pretty cool. Thanks for watching this episode of Training Update, and I'll see you guys next time on The Pulse. <laughs> how fun is that? That was great. So, he ended up right here in the studio that we're in right now. Yeah, Peter's fun, isn't he? Yes. So obviously there's a lot going on in the training, a lot of new things coming up. Um, we, we work with people from all segments of society, everyone from kids to seniors. Um, in fact, as far as kids go, we have, um, we have a great youth media program here. Uh, we've been working with the kids from Cal, the Center for Advanced Learning. They have um, a show called The Hype that they've been doing. They have like six shows in the can and they've done um, studio camp and then we have a whole new group coming in here. They, they ride the Max down here from, from Cal and, um, and they do an amazingly good job and they're, those are on our website and the uh, shows are on YouTube as well. But um, you have had some of your kids go through some of the training here, have you not? Yeah, I've had um, all of my kids take um, the orientation Except first. Except the baby. Yes, <laughs> and um, um, two of my um, my boys have taken fill camera classes so they can check out the cameras and we can do things together. And how old are we talking? How old my oldest is 14 and um, my younger son's 11. So, so they're... There's no real age limit. I mean, as far as the parents ha give the okay yeah. and they're old enough to be careful with the cameras mm -hmm. and learn it. They're welcome here. Right, and we can work on stuff together. It's a great family project, it isn't is. it? Yeah, that's nice. So, um, so that's the one thing people should know about that. You know, we are open to pretty much everybody in the area. So we'd we'd love to have people come in and check us out. Now, um, we are trying to do a lot of different things with our training. Now we have that new micro mobile um, with the TriCaster, and people are learning all the new stuff about that. We had one of the things we tried to do was. Um, a little different way of training people, trying to get um, volunteers in and get them very invested in the programs. So for example, um, last year we had, or the last couple of years, we had something called Music Mondays, where we had a group that were specially trained. They went out and they uh, taped music events out in the Center for um, Performing Arts Plaza in downtown Gresham. You know, and people took turns, you know, switching and directing, and they learned all the different portions of it and really took uh, accountability for the show itself. This year, we had something called Animal Magnetism. Yes. What, what can you tell me about that, Jessica? You were directly involved with that. It was a, a show that they put together to help um, the people understand more about. Um, what it takes to adopt an animal, the type of people that um, were good candidates to, to adopt an animal. Now this was with the Multnomah County Animal Services yeah. people, right? Um, uh -huh. And um, they did a cute little like a dating kind of show <laughs> where the dog got to pick the, the proper owner. I love it. Um, they also did uh, stuff to, if you um, have a dog at home, um, tips to train your dog that you oh, know, okay. um, so you can. Practical tips. Yes, yeah. um, that and also, um, you know, it was nice to um, learn a couple things myself um, as far as, um, you know, a dog that is in the shelter when you're going to go visit to understand that they might be more hyper and jumpy just because they've been in a stress situation. Uh, cooped up in a small cage. But when they're out here on the floor <coughs> in more space, you know, that same dog that may act that way in the studio 
over here is very calm, you mm -hmm. know, and mm -hmm. um, so don't just turn your back on a dog because you think it might be too hyper. I thought that was give it nice. a chance. In yes, give it a perhaps. chance, and um, you know, it, it was really fun to be able to be part of that. Um, I enjoyed um, getting, you know, um, told what to do, what I should be focusing on, and when I got to watch it during playback on TV, it was really nice to be able to know, like. Um, you know, from the knee down were my shots. You know, anytime <laughs> you seen the dog, that was, you know, that my was, camera. Yeah. And it's nice to be able to um, feel like I was a part of that show. And um, it's, it's really nice to see your name's credits. You know, you sure, get credit sure. for anything you volunteer on. They make sure you're, you're, you know, you're given the credit for that. So on this particular show, did you always run camera or did you do other things? On this particular show, I always run camera. I've uh, been able to do teleprompter on some other things like open holiday. And um, I've gotten to um, do switcher um, for various things. And um, with Keith, I was able to do one of the city um, things that he also oh, gets to do for Troutdale. Government meetings yeah, that he covers. Yeah, that was sure. interesting to, to listen to that and see how that all goes, too. Yeah. So you've had the opportunity to do different things. Yep, and, and I, um, I've expressed interest in the other things that I haven't got to do yet that I'll be able to come in and on something in the future and work on those things as well so I can feel well-rounded on um, what, what they offer to learn here. Right. You know, I, I know that on the animal magnetism program that there were, um, that a lot of the content was actually come up with, uh, was created by uh, the volunteers here that in conjunction with the Multnomah County Animal Services. So some of the actual content of the show was created by you guys and, and that the, um, the directing and everything was actual volunteers. It wasn't all taken over by the, by the staff here. So it was really your show, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah definitely. Cool. So di did you feel like you learned learn something new and, and, and was there a sense of teamwork there? Definitely a sense of teamwork. Um, you know, uh, some of the people you know throughout time because you work on different projects with them. Mm -hmm. um, and we all um, learn how to work with each other and what someone can do better than the other. Um, you, find, you find your strengths? You do, and then just getting to know the other volunteers to know what their strengths are in case um, you have something in the future that you can call them on and you know how you've already worked together, they know right. how you work, or if they have something that um, they call you for help, you also know them and you're more apt to want to help them because right. you've worked with them before. Right, that's a, that's a, that's a, good, that's a good point. You, you, know, you, you help me on my show, I'll help you later on yeah, yours. Yeah, and, and that that's kind of really how well. it is. It turns into like um, an extended family. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Well, I think we have some roll in from the Animal Magnetism show. We'll look for the shots that are from the knee down so we know that they're your There's shots. There's a lot of humor already. in that show. Is there, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of fun, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Well, why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, Animal Magnetism Okay. Okay, great. thanks. Hi, welcome to Multnomah County Animal Services. My name is Ann Potter and I'm here to give you a glimpse of what goes on inside the doors of the animal shelter every day. Welcome to Multnomah County Animal Services News Hour. I'm Kitty Latour. And I'm Kat Barkley, in for Ruff Barker, who is making his theatrical debut. Break a leg, Ruff. Coming to you from Multnomah County, the pet capital of the universe, it is Pet Connection. And introducing our star and hostess of our show, it's Jean Fleming. Thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to Pet Connection, brought to you by Multnomah County Animal Services. Well, hello again, and welcome to a very special interview with Multnomah County Animal Services volunteer, Bud Garrison. Thanks for joining us, Bud. So you're here today to chat a bit about the foster care program at the, mm -hmm. at the shelter. That's really exciting. 
What exactly is the foster care program at the shelter? That's what the dogs do while we're away. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That looks like it was a really fun show to work it on. It was. It was the funnest thing I've gotten to do so far. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> who does come up with all those ideas? Some of it was from Multnomah County Animal Services people, but I think it's like um, you, you just people will hear something of what the script's supposed to be like, and uh, you can throw in your own ideas. I, I believe Ray thought it would be good to pretend he's the pizza delivery guy, you know, and come come knock on the door because the dog's going to order pizza while you're out of the <laughs> way. And so it, it just made it really fun. So you kind of brainstorm and yeah. everybody, everybody's input was valuable? Yes. Isn't that nice? Yes, that's it a, is. Yeah, that's a nice way to do it. So, um, yeah, the Animal Magnetism show, I think, is a lot of fun. If people want to watch it, it's available on, on YouTube and on our website, I believe. So those are fun things to watch. Um, but we do have lots of uh, opportunities to work on things like that, like I said. And, and if people want to, you know, work on this show, you know, work on the Pulse, work on Community Hall, Line there, they're welcome to come here and do that. And you know, we also have um, another. Um I want to say, uh, another part of Metro East, which is our radio station, and the radio station is KZME, if you're familiar with KZME. 107.1. 107.1, very good, right on the money. <laughs> and uh, uh, KZME is a community radio station, it's terrific, it's growing by leaps and bounds, and um, we are going to have uh, James Deneen, like I mentioned earlier, who's our volunteer music director, with Kristen, who is um, who I just met for the first time the other night at an event that they had that they'll probably talk about today, um, at Burgerville, but it, um, she does. She's the host of the Lunchbox on Tuesdays. The Lunchbox is a really fun um, uh, lunchtime segment. So um, we are going to show a little clip from the Lunchbox, and then um, we're going to have James and Kristen come on and, and tell us all about things that are going on at, at KCME. Great. Does that sound good to you? Yes, definitely. Okay. I think we should take a look at that now, and okay. then we'll be back later to close the show. Okay, great. <laughs> 